What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. It's official, and Apple has sent out their invitations for their next big keynote on Wednesday, September the 7th in San Francisco at 10 a.m. Pacific time. But let's look deeper and completely overanalyze this invite because I have nothing else better to do. Now, first of all, did you eagle eyes notice the invite is shaped in a pattern that's the top of the Apple logo? See, I did. Now, secondly, we know rumors point to a dual lens camera with DSLR type capabilities, and the invite features a background with a bokeh effect found with DSLRs. It produces a blur in out of focus parts of an image with a shallow depth of field that's produced by the lens. And for all of you know it alls that like to comment, I've heard people say bokeh or bokeh. It's like GIF or GIF or the ATAT -AT or at at debate. Hashtag first world problems. Now, this is also a rare dark themed invite from Apple that's black instead of bright and cheery, pointing to low light capabilities. And see you, a camera sees you. Uh huh, yeah. I told you I have nothing better to do. All right, the idea of DSLR like features is great, but if it ends up only limited to the larger 5.5 inch phone, you know what? I'm passing on it. Now, let's check out new tidbits on the iPhone 7. A rumored leaked spec sheet from Weibo could be totally real or totally fake, but it matches rumors and shows the inclusion of lightning equipped wired ear pods and a lightning to 3.5 millimeter adapter that will be included in the box. Apple has also been granted product certifications by the Eurasian Economic Union for new iPhones, new Apple Watches, and a reference to AirPods, the same name from a US trademark filing in October, which still makes me sad that they skipped on AirBuds. Aww. Now we've always compared the rumored AirPods to the Bragi Dosh wireless earbuds, but there's a chance Apple might have acquired or is at least working on a partnership with Bragi. That's because Bragi has teased on its Twitter one of the biggest announcements in the company's history will take place on Monday, September the 5th in Cupertino, the city that's also home to Apple. Now this is big or they're just doing a hell of a marketing tease, we'll find out. There's also been a lot of chatter about a deep blue iPhone or a darker space gray color option for the next iPhone 7. But according to this latest photo from Mako Takara of alleged SIM tray slots, they believe the iPhone 7 will have a five color lineup, including gold, silver, space gray, one of your favorites of mine, rose gold, and a new glossy black option that is similar to the finish of the 2013 Mac Pro or takes me back to the days of the iPhone 3G. Now, I personally love a glossy black to match my glossy black chaps. All right, that's a bad apple, and I swear I don't own a pair yet. <laughs> All right, looking forward to the latest Bloomberg report from Mark Gurman says Apple is indeed working on a refreshed Mac lineup and is planning to release some of those new Macs as soon as October. Updates include the rumored thinner MacBook Pro with the OLED touch bar above the keyboard that can change depending on the app you're using. Apple is internally calling this the dynamic function row, but the report says that name may change. A new MacBook Air will bring multifunctional USB-C ports, and iMacs will have an option for a new advanced graphics chip from AMD as well. And for all of you who have been asking about a new Apple display, the report claims Apple and LG are collaborating to bring a new standalone monitor to connect to its computers with a high-resolution 5K screen. Yes, a 5K Apple display is on its way. And with all of these Mac announcements and the likely release of Mac O Sierra in October, what does that mean for the iPad? I've always thought we'd see an iPad update this year, but according to Bloomberg, Apple may roll out new updates to the iPad line next year. The updates include software improvements to the Apple Pencil, potentially allowing users to mark and annotate objects across multiple apps. New iPad hardware will include even faster display technology for smoother zooming, panning, and scrolling. But the report reiterates we shouldn't expect an iPad lineup update until next year when a rumored new iPad Pro with a 10.5 inch size screen will also debut. Which means I gotta save my money until they release a True Tone 12.9 inch iPad Pro after they gave it to the 9.7 inch one only four months later. And in a follow up to our story about the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus touch disease, a class action lawsuit has been filed by iPhone owners in three different states against Apple over the alleged defect where iPhone 6 and 6 Plus touchscreens have become unresponsive and fail. It's a real thing for users, but Apple still won't acknowledge it and has turned away many out of warranty customers. Until they do, you know what's coming for you. That's a bad apple. <laughs>
Now, let's just hope this doesn't end up affecting something like the iPhone 6s because no one wants an iPhone 6s touch disease or iPhone 6 STD. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I will be here all night. And before we go, we wanted to reward Apple Byte Nation with our amazing CNET sweepstakes that could get you one of two brand new Apple TVs. Go to the link right here and that's cnet.co.com. You'll have to register to create a CNET account and it's worth it because you could win a brand new Apple TV. The sweepstakes goes on until September the 8th when we'll announce the winners right here. All right, that's going to do it for this show. Make sure to watch our live coverage of the Apple keynote this Wednesday. And you can always email us at theapplebyte at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you all next time for another bite of the Apple.